I got the horse right here, the name's Paul Revere, and he's a handicapper that's real sincere. Can do, can do, this guy says the horse can do, if he says the horse can do, can do, can do. I think you Valentine is on the board in line. The giant guy says the bigger than five to nine. But he says the horse can jet. This guy says the horse can jet. For Paul would be right by the house chest alright. And now it all depends on your friend last night. I know it's Valentine's, I'm like five foot five. He says the jockey's a brother and a friend of mine. I tell you, Paul, he says the horse that this is no fun steer, and he's a fancy capo that's very sincere. I go for Valentine, get on the board in mind, the guy says the horse can't find two nines. So he says the horse has jet, this guy says the horse has jet. her gets mixed up in the mission dodge. She's a beautiful doll, all right, with 100% eyes. It's too bad that such a doll wastes all her time being good. How could she make any money from that? I don't know. Maybe she owns a piece in the mission. Yeah. So tell me, what about Nathan Detroit? Has he got a place for his crap game yet? We don't know. The heat is on. He's still looking for a place. Well, I'm loaded and looking for action. I just acquired 5,000 potatoes. 5,000 bucks? Where'd you acquire it? Collected the reward on my father. Everybody's looking for action around here. I just wish Nathan finds a... Well, why Lieutenant Brannigan? Mr. South Street, this is Lieutenant Brannigan of the New York Police Department. A pleasure. Any of you guys seen Nathan Detroit? 
Which Nathan Detroit is that? I mean the Nathan Detroit who's been running a floating crap game and getting away with it by moving it to a different spot every night. Why are you telling us this, Your Honor? I'm telling you this because I know you two bums work for Detroit, rustling up customers for his crap game. We do? Yeah. Oh. And you can tell him for me that I know right now he's running around trying to find a spot for his crap game. Well, nobody's going to give him one because they all know Brannigan is breathing down their neck. Oh, hi, Nathan. Fellas. I'm having terrible trouble on account of that lousy Brandon, and I can't- Something wrong, Mr. Detroit? Oh, hello, Lieutenant. I hope you don't think I was talking about you. There are other lousy Brannigans. Detroit, I have been talking to your colleagues about your crap game. I imagine you're having trouble finding a place. Well, as you know, the heat is on, and from the fact that you have to live on your salary. <coughs> Did you find a place? What does that cop want from me? What am I, a serial killer? I merely run a crap game for the fact of those who want a little action. In return, I take a small cut. Is that a crime? Yeah. Nathan, did you find a place? Did you find a place for the game? Did I find a place? Yes, we're having the game at the Radio City Music Hall. How are you going to fix the ushers? I tried all the regular places, the back of the cigar store, the funeral parlor. Nathan, you once said there might be a chance in the Biltmore Garage. I was over at the Biltmore Garage. Spoke to Joey Biltmore himself. He said he'd take a chance on me if I gave him a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks? In cash. He won't take my marker. Your marker's no good, huh? What do you mean? Uh, Mark Hicks has a piece of paper that says, I owe you one thousand dollars, signed Nathan Detroit. A marker is like a pledge on which someone can't welch on. It's like not saluting the flag. My marker is as good as gold. Only Joey Biltmore don't think so. Me, without a livelihood. Why, I've been running the crap game ever since I was a juvenile delinquent. <laughs> Nathan, can't you do something? What can I do? I'm broke. I couldn't even buy Adelaide a present today. And you know what day is? <coughs> today is? It's mine and Adelaide's 14th anniversary. Yeah? Yeah, we've been engaged for 14 years. <laughs> Nathan, the country of the game. The town's up in here with high players. The Greeks in town. Brandy Bottle Bait. Scranton Slim. I know. I can make a fortune. But where can I have the game? The Biltmore Garage wants a grand. But we ain't got a grand on hand. And they now got a lock on the door of the gym at Public School 84. There's the stock room behind McCloskey's bar. But Mrs. McCloskey ain't a good scout And things weird how they are The back of the police station is out So the Biltmore Garage is the spot But the one thousand bucks we ain't got Why is good old reliable Nathan Nathan, Nathan, Nathan Detroit If you're looking for action, he'll furnish the spot even when the heat is on, it's never too hot. Not for good old reliable Nathan, for it's always just a short walk to the oldest established permanent floating crap game in New York. There are well-heeled shooters everywhere, everywhere. There are well-heeled shooters everywhere. And an awful lot of lettuce for the fella who can get us. If we only had a lousy little grand, we could be a millionaire. That's good old reliable Nathan, 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 Detroit. If the size of your bundle you want to increase, we'll arrange that you go broken, quiet, and peace. In a hideout provided by Nathan, where there are no neighbors to squawk, it's the oldest established permanent floating. Where's the game? Gotta have the game or we'll die from shame. It's the oldest established permanent floating crap game in New York. Gentlemen, do not
not worry. Nathan Detroit's crap game will float again. My boys will let you know where it is. Okay, Nathan. Say, you know who else is looking for action? Sky Masterson. Sky Masterson's in town. Sky Masterson? There's the highest player of them all. Higher than the Greek? Higher than anybody. Why do you think they call him Scott? That's how high he is. The one saw him bet $5,000 on a cockroach. And another time, when he was sick, he wouldn't take penicillin on account he bet 10 C's that his temperature would go to 104. Did it? Did it? He's so lucky it went to 106. Good old Sky. Maybe you should borrow the thousand from Sky. Oh no, not Sky. With him, that kind of money ain't lending money. It's bed money. So why don't I bet him? Why don't I bet him a thousand on something? You would bet Sky Masterson? I ain't scared. I'm perfectly willing to take the risk, providing I can figure out a bet on which there's no chance of losing. He likes crazy bets. Like, which lump of sugar will a fly sit on? Or how far you can kick a piece of cheesecake? Ooh, cheesecake! Look, go over to Mindy's and ask how many pieces of cheesecake he sold yesterday. And how many pieces of strudel? How much cheesecake? How much strudel? What do you want to know for? Just find out. Here comes Adelaide. If she hears I'm around the crap game, she'll never set foot on me again! Hello, Nathan! Adelaide Pigeon! You go ahead, girl. Order me a tuna fish on fries and a chocolate sundae. With tomato, ketchup, and egg. Okay, Adelaide. Gotta get back to the hot box! You're still rehearsing. Yes, that slave driver Charlie's been working us all day. Funny lie says, look, Charlie, I'm starving. I gotta get something to eat. And he says, you don't want to get something to eat. You just want to meet up with that cheap bum, Nathan Detroit. And what did you say to him? I says, I'll meet whoever I want. Well, don't get too self upset. How's your cold? <sighs> it's better. Um, Nathan, happy anniversary. A present for me? I hope you like it. A belt. Read the card. Sugar is sweet, and so is jelly. So put this belt around your belly. <laughs> Adelaide, about your present, I was going to get you a diamond wristwatch with a gold band and two rubies on the side. Nathan, you shouldn't have. It's all right. I didn't. I'm sorry. It's OK. I kind of like when you forget to give me presents. It makes me feel like we're married. Don't worry, honey. One day I'll be in the money, and you'll have more mink than a mink. Oh, Nathan, I can do without anything just so long as you don't start running the crap game again. The crap game was an absurd thought. Twelve hundred cheesecake and fifteen hundred strudel. Huh? Yesterday, Mindy sold twelve hundred cheesecake and fifteen hundred strudel. More strudel than cheesecake. That's great! What is this? Nothing, honey. Hey, Detroit. Any news yet? Not yet, Harry. I'll let you know. Okay, Detroit. Nathan, what is going on? Uh, his wife's having a baby. Why is he asking you? He's nervous. It's his first wife. Now, look, Adelaide, <laughs> I'm expecting a fellow, and I know you're hungry. Nathan, are you trying to get rid of me? No, I just don't want your sandwich to get soggy. Fellows, will you take Adelaide to the drugstore? You see Adelaide. Got a cold, and it's across the street, and there are a lot of open manholes around. Oh, Nathan, you're just the sweetest thing ever. Goodbye! Nathan Detroit! Masterson, glad to see you, Sky! Ah, oh, Nathan, you old promoter, you. How are you? You look great. Oh, feeling great, Nathan. I just spent two wonderful weeks out west of Nevada. Great place. Beautiful scenery, healthful climate. And I beat him for 50 G's at Blackjack. 50 G's? You gonna be in town long? No, I'm flying to Havana tomorrow. Havana? Yes, there's a lot of action down there. You should come with me. Oh no, I got a lot of things to do here. In the meantime, how about we go over to Mindy's? Off a piece of cheesecake or something. They sell a lot of cheesecake. <laughs> no, I'm not hungry. Tell me, how's Adelaide? Oh, fine, fine. Still dancing out the hot box. I suppose one of these days you'll be getting married. We all gotta go sometime. <laughs> Nathan, we can fight it. Guys like us, Nathan, we gotta remember that. Pleasant as a doll's company may be, she must always take second place to Ace's back to back. Yeah, yeah. Say, you hungry yet? Maybe we go over to Mindy's, have a piece of cheesecake, or strudel, or some. No, no, I think I'll go get the late results. Oh, but you will admit that Mindy's has the greatest cheesecake in the country. 
Yes, I am quite partial to Minnie's cheesecake. Who ain't? And yet there are some people who prefer Minnie's strudel. I'll tell you. What do you think he sells more? The cheesecake or the strudel? Well, I never gave it much thought. But if everybody were like I am, I'd say Mitty sells much more cheesecake than strudel. For how much? Huh? For how much? Why, Nathan, I never took you to be a betting man. You always take your percentage right off the top. Well, I thought I'd give you a little action for old time's sake. I'll bet you $1,000 that yesterday, Mitty sold more strudel than cheesecake. Nathan, let me tell you a story. Oh. When I was a young man about to go out into the world, my father says to me a very valuable thing. He says to me this. Some the old guy says, I'm sorry I'm not able to get you rolling because I don't have any potatoes to give you. But instead, I'm going to stake you to some very valuable advice. One of these days in your travels, a guy is going to come up to you with a brand new deck of cards on which the seal is not yet broken. And this guy is going to offer to bet you that he can make the jack of spades jump out of that deck and squirt cider in your ear. But son, do not bet this man, for as sure as you stand there, you're going to end up with an earful of cider. Now, Nathan, I do not claim you've been clocking me these cheese. You wouldn't think so. However, if you're still looking for some action, I will bet you that same thousand that you do not know the color of the necktie you have on. Well? No, bet. Blue, what a crazy color. <laughs> Nathan, we took Allie to the drugstore. Don't bother me! Hi, Sky. Good. How's it with you fellows? Not bad. Nicely, nicely. We took Adelaide to the drugstore, and she says for you to pick her up after the show at the hot box. And don't be late. Yes, dear. <laughs> I mean, yes. yes, dear. That's how it's been talk if I ever heard it. Nathan, you are trapped. And Adelaide, you have the kind of doll that's most difficult to unload. But I don't want to unload her. I love Adelaide. And if a guy does not have a doll, well, if a guy does not have a doll, then who would holler at him? A doll is a necessity. Nathan, I'm not putting the rap on dolls. I just say a guy should have them around when he wants them. Not like dolls like Adelaide. Nathan, figuring weight for age, all dolls are the same. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And how come you ain't got a doll? How come you ain't taking one to Havana? I like to travel light, but if I wish to take a doll to Havana, then there are a large assortment available. Not real high class dolls. Any doll, you name it. Any doll. And I name her. Will you bet on that? You bet a thousand dollars that if I name any doll, you'll take her to Havana tomorrow? You got a bet! Someday, I'm going to take a pickaxe and rip up Broadway from end to end. They do that every day. Excuse me, do you take sinners here? Indeed we do, Sarah. How do you do? My name is Abner, Arvine Abner. Sky Masterson. What's wrong? What is the trouble? My heart is heavy with sin. You poor man. I have wasted my life in gambling and evil betting, but I have suddenly realized the terrible things that betting can lead to. Agatha, coffee. Didn't I see you a little while ago on Broadway? Uh, possibly. I have been wandering around trying to get up the courage to come here. And you're willing to give up gambling? Oh, gladly. I never would have become a gambler at all had I not Falling in with the evil companions who are always offering me sucker bets. Here you are, man. Thank you. It makes me feel good just to talk to you people. You just go right on talking to Sister Sarah there, and you'll be all right. I'm glad you found us. Well, the Bible says, seek and ye shall find. Very good. <clears throat> you know, I wish we could find more sinners like you. We're out there every day trying. You should try the nighttime. How's that? Well, as a former sinner, I should know. 
The best time to find sinners is between midnight and dawn. You might even try having an all-night session against the devil. Very good suggestion indeed, Brother Masterson. Thank you. You're welcome. Coffee is so good, I can't understand why it isn't a sin. Fine, old gentleman. I suppose he sort of looks after you? We look after each other. Uh-huh. I suppose if one of you goes someplace, the other goes along? Yes, of course. Oh, of course. Here are two of our pamphlets I'd like you to read. They'll give you a good deal of comfort. Thank you. And we're having a midnight prayer meeting this Thursday, which I'm sure you'll wish to attend. Oh, I'm sure. Miss Sarah, I hope you do not think I'm getting out of line. But I think it's wonderful to see a pretty doll, a, a nice-looking lady like you, sacrificing herself for the sake of others, staying in this place. Do you ever go anyplace else, travel or something? I would like to go to Africa. Oh, well, that's a bit far, but there's a lot of wonderful places just a few hours from New York by plane. Ever been in a plane? No. Oh, that's wonderful. Here's another pamphlet I think you should read. Thank you. Of course, I'm going to need a lot of personal help. My heart is black as two feet down a wolf's gullet. We'll all be speaking at the Thursday prayer meeting. Well, I'll need private lessons. We should have dinner sometime. I think not, Mr. Masterson. Sorry, just uh, blossoming under the warmth of your kindness. Hey, that's wrong. What's wrong? That's not Proverbs, it's, I it's Isaiah. It's Proverbs. Sorry, no peace under the wicked. Chapter... Pro Isaiah chapter uh, 57, verse 22. Isaiah? Isaiah. There's two things that in every hotel room in the country. Sky Masterson and the Gideon Bible. <laughs> I must have read the good book 10 or 12 times. You've read the Bible 12 times? Sure, what's wrong with the Bible? In my business, the strangest information frequently comes in handy. I once won a 5G parlay on a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Tell me, Mr. Masterson, why are you here? Well, I told you, I'm a sinner. You're lying. Well, lying's a sin. Look, I'm a big sinner. If you get me, it's eight to five, the others will follow. You need sinners, don't you? We're managing. Oh, uh -huh. let's face it, this mission is laying an egg. Why don't you let me help you? I'll bet I can fill this place with sinners. I don't bet. Well, I'll make you a proposition. When's this big meeting of yours, Thursday? I will guarantee to fill that meeting with a dozen genuine sinners. And I will also guarantee that they will sit still and listen to you. And what's my end of the bargain? Have dinner with me. Why would you want to have dinner with me? I'm hungry. Here. What's this? Sky Masterson's marker for 12 sinners. If you don't think it's good, ask anybody in town. I owe you one dozen sinners. I'll pick you up at noon tomorrow for dinner. At noon? Yeah, it'll take us some time to get there. To get where? To my favorite restaurant. Where's that? El Cafe Cubana in Havana. El Cafe Cubana? Havana? Where do you want to go? Howard Johnson's? Havana? Why not? The plane gets us there in five hours and back the same night. And the food's great. I now realize, Mr. Gambler, that when you were describing the blackness of your heart, you didn't do yourself justice. And I now realize, Sister Sarah, that no matter how beautiful a sergeant is, She's still a sergeant. Please go away. Why don't you change your pitch, Sarge? Come to the meeting one and all, except guys. I hate guys. I don't hate anybody. Well, except me. It is a relief to know that it's just me and not all guys personally. It's nice to know that somewhere out there there's a guy that might appeal to you. I wonder what this guy will be like. He will not be a gambler. I am not interested in what he will not be. I'm interested in what he will be. Don't worry. I'll know. Why? Yourself a Scarsdale Gallagher, the breakfast eating Brooks Brothers type. Yes. I know I shall meet him when the time is right. You've got this guy all figured out, haven't you? I have. Including what he smokes. All figured out, huh? All figured out. And you'll know what a 
glance by the two pairs of pants. And how do you know that? 
It's a bet I can't lose. I bet him he couldn't take a doll to Havana. Why couldn't he? She ain't the type of doll that goes to Havana. Where does she go? She don't go no place. That's how I know I'm gonna win. Don't be so sure, Nathan. It ain't a horse, it's a doll. But Joey... Nathan, there will be no crap game here tomorrow unless I get my dough in advance. Joey, you've known me for a long time. That's why I want it in advance. <laughs> Look, Joey, I gotta go. I mean, Natalie, not the hot box. Can I at least tell the guys that's gonna be at your place? Not till I get the dough. Okay, you'll get it. Goodbye. Goodbye. I hope you get stabbed by a Studebaker. <laughs> And now, for the grand finale of our Round the World Review, we take you down on the farm with our star, Miss Adelaide, and the hot box, Farmerettes. Five? What have you got there? A 
book? A book? You're always reading books. You're becoming a regular bookie. Nathan, darling, this is very interesting. The doctor gave it to me. I went to him about my cold. How is your cold? Oh, it's the same. So the doctor asked me how long I had had it, and I told him a long time. And I told him I thought it was on account of my dancing with hardly any clothes on, which is what I normally wear. But he said to read this book because it might be due to psychology. You haven't got that, have you? Nathan, this is the psychology that tells you my girls do some types of things. Oh. Would it tell you why certain types of dolls would go for certain types of guys which you wouldn't think that they would do so? What do you mean? Take me. There are almost certain types of dolls that wouldn't go for certain types of guys. Nathan, no matter how terrible a fellow seems, you can never be sure that some doll won't go for him. Thank God. Yeah. Nathan, darling. Starting next week, I'm going to be getting a raise. So, with what I'll be making, I wonder, maybe we could finally get married. Well, we're going to. Sooner or later. But, Nathan, I'm starting to worry about my mother. Your mother? What about your mother? Well, Nathan, this is something I never told you before, but my mother back in Rhode Island, she thinks we're married already. Why would you think a thing like that? I couldn't be engaged for 14 years, could I? People don't do that in Rhode Island. They all get married. Then why is it such a small state? <laughs> anyway, Nathan, I told my mother I was married. So you did, huh? Uh-huh. Then after about two years. What? After about two years? We had a baby. You told your mother we had a baby! I had to, Nathan! Mother wouldn't have understood if we hadn't! What kind of baby was it? It was a boy. I named him after you, Nathan. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so where is this Nathan Jr. supposed to be now? Well, he's at boarding school. I wrote to mother he won his football game last Saturday. Wish I had a bet on it. But Nathan, that's not all, Nathan. Don't tell me he has a little sister! All those years! Nathan, mother believes in big families. Just give me the grand total. Fine. <gasps> Your mother must be a glutton for punishment. But Nathan, now that we're finally getting married, it won't be alive anymore. How could you do something to a nice old broad like your mother? Nathan, you don't even know my mother. But I'll be mean to soon, and then what do I tell her? What do we do with the five kids? Send them off to the Phillies or something? We could get married! Marriage ain't something you just jump into like it was a kettle of fish! Nathan? What do you think I bought in this box? Nathan! What do you think I bought in this box? Sally's wedding shop. I can't guess. It's a wedding sale. I bought it three years ago. I won't show it to you because it's bad luck. It's bad luck. Anyway, Nathan, I have the wedding veil. All we need now is our license and our blood test. Our what? Our blood test is a law. What a city. First they close my crap game, then they open my veins. You're not planning to run your crap game again, are you? Oh, no, Adley. Why do you think I gave up the crap game? It's because I love you. And I want us two to be the happiest married couple that there is in the world. Has anybody seen an earring out here? I don't think so. You, I'm all dated up to society, Max, tomorrow, and he cancels on account of your dopey crap game. Honestly, Adelaide, I pity you. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Look, Adelaide, I'm down on my knees. Get up. It reminds me of your crap game. We're going to get married sooner or later, Adelaide. I don't believe you anymore. Come on, cheer up. You'll feel better tomorrow. I'll see that old smile. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Shun may react with 
psychosomatic symptoms difficult to endure, affecting the upper respiratory tract. In other words, you've been waiting around for that plain little band of gold. A poison can develop a cold. You can spray it wherever you figure the stress of Hawkeye learns. You can give her a shot for whatever she's got, but it just won't work. develop a cold. It says here, the female remaining single, just in the legal sense, shows an erotic tendency, see note, tendency, see note, chronic organic syndromes, toxic or hypertense, involving the eye, the ear, the nose, and throat. In other words, just from worrying whether the wedding is on or off, a poison can develop a cough. You can feed her all day with the vitamin A and the bromo fits, but the medicine never gets anywhere near where the trouble is. If she's getting her kind of a name for herself, develop a cough. And furthermore, she's stalling and stalling and stalling the wedding trip. A poison can develop a grip. When they get on the train for Niagara and she can hear church bells chime, the compartment is air conditioned and the mood sublime. Taj Mahal, 
Call it sad, call it funny, but it's better than even money that the guy's only doing it for some dough. When you see a Joe saving half of his dough, make a bet that he's living in it for some dough. When a bum buys wine like a bum can afford, it's the cinch that a bum is under the thumb of some little broad. When you meet a mug, Lately out of the jug, and he's still lifting platinum on a rug. Call it hell, call it heaven, it's a probable 12 to 7 that the guy's only doing it for some dough. Sport, and his cash has run short. Make a bet that he's banking it with some dog. When a guy wears tails with the fur green white, who the hell do you think he's tickling pink on Saturday night? When a lazy slob takes a good steady job, and he smells from my towels and barbasol. Call it dumb, call it clever, all that you can give on forever, that the guy's only some attention to him. Yes, he attended every street meeting we had this morning. He must be interested in our work. Very. By the way, Sarah, you spoke beautifully this morning. No, I can't reach these people. I should have never volunteered for this post. Well, let's go into lunch. I was going to convert Broadway all by myself. I was going to take these gamblers and have them just begging to come to the mission. General Cartwright! Good morning, Sarah. Arvide? Good morning, General. We didn't know you were coming to town, General. I got in early this morning. I spent the last hour trying to find you. Oh, I'm sorry. We were just holding some extra street meetings, trying to stimulate more interest. Good morning, General. Good morning. Sarah, there's something I have to talk to you about. Won't you come inside? Have some lunch with us. No, I don't have the time, dear. I have several other calls to make. We at headquarters have come to a definite conclusion. We have decided to close this branch of the mission. Oh, no. Close the mission? But, General, please! Someone can do good here, even if I can't! Sarah, there's so many calls on us. So many other places where work is really needed. Uh, but, but we're doing much better now. We've announced a big meeting for tomorrow night. You've announced a meeting? But will anyone be here? Will anybody come? Pardon me. I couldn't help overhearing. My name is Sky Masterson, former sinner. How do you do? How do you do? General, I wish to protest the closing of this mission. I believe Miss Sarah can be a big success here. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, but I'm not so certain. Well, a dollar will get you ten. What? General, might I make a suggestion? Yes. Why don't you come to the meeting tomorrow night and find out for yourself? Don't you think that would be a good idea? Well, if I thought the mission had a chance. General, I personally guarantee you a room full of genuine sinners. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> You all got your carnations? Remember, nobody will be let into the game unless they got their red carnations. It's like a password. Okay, but where's the game? I'll let you know in a minute. Nathan, is it all set? Can I tell the guys inside the billboard garage? Not yet. I gotta sell them for a while. Joey wants his dough first. Nathan, it's 11 o'clock. They won't stick around much longer. So sue me. I left nicely back at my hotel to wait for the money from Sky. 
Where's the dough? I haven't come yet. I told you to wait for it. I had to get some groceries. I felt a little faint. Get back to the hotel and wait for the money from Sky. And don't come back here without it, even if you starve to death. Okay, Nathan. Nate, where's the gate? Hurry from Brooklyn, how's it going? You have no place for a crap game. Tell us, and we'll seek elsewhere for entertainment. Take it easy, Harry. I hope you do not spoil anything. As much as I have to do, entertain a very prominent guest. I'm sure you've heard of us. I'd like to meet Big Julie from Chicago. Well, how do you do, Big Julie? Welcome to our fair city, where, as you know, the heat is on. And if you stick around, you'll be sure to get some action. What do you say? Shall we stick around or shall we blow? I came here to shoot crap. So let's shoot crap. Sure, sure. Nathan, if you have no place for your crap game, I'm sure Big Julie will be considerably displeased. And Big Julie does not like to be displeased. And you may find that those who at one time or another displeased him. Although I may admit it's very hard to find such citizens in the view of the fact that they are no longer around and about. Why would I displease such a gentleman as Big Julie here? Because when Nathan Detroit, when Nathan Detroit, when Nathan Detroit arranges something, he's sure to follow through. Well, well, an interesting gathering indeed. The cream of society. Angie the Ox, Society Max, Harry the Horse, Liver Lips Louie. Harry the Horse, up from Brooklyn. And, pardon me, I'm very bad on names, but your face looks familiar. Mind telling me where you're from? East Cicero, Illinois. What do you do there? I'm a scoutmaster. <laughs> oh, don't ever help my mother across the street. Lovely. This looks like the male chorus. From Blossom Time, what's the occasion? Well, we, uh, it, it's a party. Indeed, what kind of party? Goodbye, girls, see you tomorrow! It's a bachelor dinner. Nathan's getting married. What? For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody cannot deny. <laughs> oh my gosh, Nathan, I'm so surprised! Why didn't you tell me? It was a surprise. <laughs> but when I saw you here with all these fine gentlemen, I never thought it would be a bachelor dinner. I thought it's a bachelor dinner! It's a bachelor dinner. Yes, sir, a bachelor dinner! Tell me, Nate, what's the happy day? Well... Nathan, these good fellows were nice enough to give you a bachelor dinner. You might as well tell them when the wedding day is. We need time for our license and our blood test. You can elope. What? You could drive down to Maryland. What's the name of that town? Uh, Pimlico. Not Pimlico. Elkton. They'll marry you right away and they don't even ask for a blood test. Ain't that unhealthy? Nathan, that's a great idea. Oh, I'll let you my getaway car. My getaway. Oh, Nathan, let's do it! What the heck? My congratulations too, Nathan, and I only hope there is nothing in heredity. Let's do craps! Oh my gosh, Nathan, I'm so excited! You'll be at the hot box tomorrow night, right? I'll have my table reserved, and I'll be dressing whenever you will open. I'm so happy. What do I why am my mother? Just send a telegram and date it back. You know what? I might as well just wait until we have five children. It won't take us that long. <laughs> you better find a place for the game. What can I do? The money from Sky ain't come yet. Maybe it won't come. Maybe he took the doll to Havana. He couldn't have. How could he? She couldn't have gone.
time is 5 p.m. Temperatures of only 85 degrees. Have an enjoyable evening. We depart promptly at 10 p.m. for New York City. a million laughs. Here is buried Christopher Columbus. <laughs> At least he's lying down. Preservative. You know, 
This would be a wonderful way to get children to drink milk. <laughs> Come on, it's over, and you're still a champ. You all right? Am I all right? Ask me how do I feel? Ask me now that we're cozy and clean. Well, sir. if we want to make the plane to New York. I don't want to go back to New York. I'm taking you back. You're no gentleman. Look, a doll like you shouldn't be mixed up with a guy like me. 
It's no good. I'm no good. Look, do you know why I took you to Havana? It was a bet. That's the reason you met me in the first place. It was just a bet. Well, how else would a girl get to meet a gambler? Come on! No! No! Gotta think of what's best for you! You talk just like a missionary! <laughs> certainly seems happy. She's in love. Yeah, I guess so. What time is it? I don't know, four o'clock. This is your time of day, isn't it? I've never been up this late before. How do you like it? It's so peaceful and wonderful. You're finding out something I've known for quite a while. My time of day is the dark time. A couple Hills before dawn, when the street belongs to the cop and the janitor with the mop, and the grocery clerks are all gone. When the smell of the rain washed pavement comes up clean and fresh and cold, and the street.
countless haze I knew, I freely never been in love Good morning. We took your suggestion and stayed up all night. We talked to a lot of sinners. Where have you been, Sarah? I've been to Cuba. You're even more tired than I am. Hey, hey what is this? What is this? Now stop. Wait a minute. I'm losing 10 G's. Someone must have tipped them off. I've seen a lot of strange things in my life, but I've never seen a crap game going full blast in a mission. Crap game? Sarah, you know I had nothing to do with this, don't you? Sarah! This would have never happened if I hadn't. I shouldn't have gone with you. It was wrong. No, it wasn't. You did it to help the mission. Did I? Am I going to see you tomorrow? Everyone is welcome at the mission. Oh, that's not what I meant. It's no good, Skye. You said it yourself. It's no good. What kind of doll are you anyway? I'm a mission doll. proudly presents Miss Adelaide and her debutantes.
Detroit's party this evening, sir. Is he here? No, Mr. Detroit has not been here all evening. Then, uh, bring me a ride or soda. Guys, have you seen Miss Adelaide? Huh? I bring a message for her from Nathan. I wish Nathan would bring his own messages. What is his message? Where is Nathan? Uh, it's this way. Uh, Nathan's dad in Pittsburgh has suddenly fallen ill with, uh... rare tropical disease? Yeah, that's not bad. Anyways, Nathan has to... What, where is Nathan? And what is his message? The crop game is still going on. Since last night. Big Julie, being a large loser, does not wish for the game to terminate. In fact, he's most insistent. So we find another place and the game goes on. Where is the game? You looking for some action? No, no. But I'd like to talk to some of the guys. You see, nicely, I gave my marker to somebody, and I'd kind of like to clean that up before I, you know, I have to... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll meet you outside. What about Nathan's message? Oh, Miss Adeline, Nathan is in Pittsburgh with a rare tropical ant. Goodbye. <laughs> what? He's supposed to be here tonight. We're both hoping to get married. Is it the crap game again? You know, Nathan, why does it surprise you? He promised me he would change. Change, change. Why is it the minute you dolls get a guy you like, you take him right in for alterations? Why can't you be like any other guy and marry people like normal people do and live in a house, in the country, with wallpaper and bookends? No, Miss Adelaide. <coughs> what do you mean, no? I mean, guys like Nathan and Troy and, yeah, Sky Masterson. We don't belong in a life like that. So when a dog gets mixed up with a guy like us, it's no good. No good. I'll see you. I'll see you later. Where are you going? I don't know. Las Vegas, maybe? I got a ticket on the late plane. Will you see Nathan before you go? Maybe. If you do, tell him I never want to talk to him ever again, and for him to call me here. Look, why don't you find a new guy? I can't! I love Nathan! Wait till you fall for somebody, you'll find out! Yeah. In other words, just from sitting alone at a table reserved for two. big meeting tonight. Suppose nobody is there at all. We'll simply explain to the general. We won't have to explain. It'll be very clear. I just want to get away from this whole place. To some place where... where... Where all the sinners are respectable and well behaved? You saw what happened last night. They gambled in our mission. And someday they'll be praying there. Even a man like Sky Masterson. He came seeking refuge. He came seeking me. Did you know that? Are you kidding me? I knew that the moment he started picking on you. But I didn't know you were going to get stuck on him. I'll get over it. What do you want to get over it for? It isn't pneumonia. The man I love will not be a gambler. But if you love him enough... He will not be a gambler! Sarah, dear, I've always taken care of you. 
All I want is for you to be happy. Melvin, I can wish you for the color of your coat and fortune smiling all along your way. But more I cannot wish you than to wish you find your love. Mansions I can wish you, seven footmen all in red, and calling cards upon a silver tray. But more I cannot wish you than to wish you by your love, your own true love is dead. Stand Saving. Tonight's a big meeting, isn't it? Oh, uh, it's supposed to be. The general's coming, and, uh... Oh, the general's a tough doll, eh? Well, you see, very few people are gonna be there. In fact, nobody, and, uh... I don't think Mr. Masterson is interested in our troubles, Grandfather. We've got to hurry. Miss Sarah, you've forgotten something. But being a gambler, I never forget things like this. You still hold my market for 12 sinners tonight. Thank you, Mr. Masterson. But I'd rather you forgot about it. I cannot Welsh and rocker. Mr. Masterson, last night the mission was filled with your friends. Let us say we're even. If you don't pay off that marker, I'll tell the whole town you're a dirty Welcher. Nicely. Where's the craft game? Well, Scott, it's about ten minutes walk from Which here. Which way? This way. <laughs>
fatigued, Big Julie. The boys are slightly fatigued. Playing crap for nearly 24 hours now. I do not care who is tired. I'm not 25 G's, so nobody leaves. Gentlemen, I begin to see the logic of Big Julie. It's not that Big Julie is a bad loser, it's just that he prefers to win. Right, Big Julie? Give me the dice. I'm shooting 500. Take 200. I'm half dead. But shut up. Big Julie will raise the other half. Ha. That's a one and a one. Snake eyes, you lose. And 50 for the house. But the dice are still yours. Shut up. Another five. 200 more. Here comes a big lucky roll. Ha. And it's snake eyes again. Tough luck, Big Julie. Well, that cleans me. But I ain't through yet. I will now play on credit. Uh, you see, Big Julie, the boys are very tired. But me, I'm as fresh as a daisy. And I will play with you. Me? Yeah, you. You've been raking down on every pot. You must have been out of point the bundle. Well, I assume the risk, so I should assume some of the dough. Detroit, I'm going to roll you willy or nilly. And if I lose, I will give you my marker. And if I lose, you will give him cash. Let me hear it from Big Julie. You will give me cash. Now I heard it. <laughs> Here's my marker. Put up your dough. Is anything wrong? No, no. I owe you $1,000 signed to X. How is it that you can write 1000 but cannot sign your own name? I was good at arithmetic, but I stunk in English. <laughs> Here, this will put you through Harvard. All right, I'm shooting a thousand, and to change my luck, I will use my own dice. Your own dice? I had them made for me, especially in Chicago. Big Julie, you cannot interpolate Chicago dice in a New York crap game. That is a breach of etiquette. Show me where it says that in the post. Not that I wish to seem petty, but can I take a look at these dice? These dice, they ain't got no spots on them. They're blank. Had the spots taken off for good luck, but I remember where they formerly were. <laughs> so you're gonna roll blank dice and call them from remembering where the spots formerly was? Why not? I see no reason. <laughs> a five and a five. My point is ten. Oh, well, I still got a chance. Tenzy, tenzy comes again, Z. I wish he'd fall down on his enzy. A ten. I win. A ten? A six and a four. Which one's the six and which one's the four? Either way. Okay, I'm shooting two thousand. Get it up. I just remembered. I'm alone for tonight. I gotta meet Adelaide. Get up to two thousand. Maybe you let the other guys in on the fun. Not until I'm through with you. Two thousand. A seven. I win. What a surprise. Detroit, I'm going to take it easy on you this time. What do you mean? This time, I'm shooting one dollar. I'll take all of it. Well, would you look at that? Snake eyes. I lose. For this, I got a bend down. OK, I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to roll for you 3,000. Three Gs? I'm rolling for you three Gs. Just get it down. Would it be more convenient if I put it right into your pockets? Get it down. Ha! 11. I win. Well, that claims me. Then I will play with one of you guys. Uh, now, wait a minute. You have to get, let me get even. But this time, I will roll you with my guys. All right, Detroit, that's fair, but what are you going to use for money? I will give you my marker. And you want Big Julie to put up cash. Now, you could have done it. Sure, I've done it. What kind of deal is this anyway? Uh, take it easy, Nathan. Him with his no-spot dice. Maybe I ought to knock the spots off of him. Nathan, don't make Big Julie have to do something again. Yeah, I'm on my vacation. So shoot me. Put me in cement. At least I know where I am. Here, I risk my neck to set up a crap game. I even promised to get married on account of it. So look how I wind up, broken as you were. So believe me, my tough friend from Chicago, there's nothing you could not do that would not cheer me up. Here they are. Good evening, gentlemen. Wow. 
Well, fresh blood. You looking for some action? No, I would like to talk to some of you guys. We're not talking. <laughs> We're shooting craps. I'm asking only for a minute. We are shooting craps. It has to do with Miss Sarah Brown's mission. Say, who is this guy? This is the guy I was talking about. Took the mission to the banner. I see. Hey, why don't you go back to your praying tomato? You're slowing up the action around here. If you're looking for action, would you care to make a wager on a small proposition? What's the proposition? Am I right-handed or left-handed? How would I know a thing like that? I'll give you a clue. Callie returned this to Sears Roebuck. Yeah. Look, you guys. Tonight is Miss Sarah Brown's mission at 409 West 49th Street. I promise to deliver to them some sinners. And when it comes to sinning, most of you are high up among the paint carts. Oh, whatever. I don't want to waste no evening in a hallelujah joint. Look, if you won't do it as a favor to me, do it as a favor to yourselves. I'm sure the air up in the mission is a lot cleaner than down here. And it would not hurt you guys to learn something other than the odds on making a four the hard way. You've been reading the Bible too much. So what? Maybe the Bible don't read as lively as the scratch sheet, but, to, but it's at least twice as accurate. Anybody? Well, I tried. See you around, Nathan. Oh, Sky. Uh, about the Havana business. Currently, do not have the thousand. You don't have to pay me. You won. Or I thought you took Miss Sarah to Havana. You thought wrong. Come on, Big Julie. I now have the thousand to roll you, but this time with my dice. Nothing doing. But them dice, you cannot make a path to save your soul. What did he say? I said, with them dice, he cannot make a path to save his soul. Well, maybe. Maybe I can save his, and yours, and, and yours, and his. I'm going to roll the dice. I will bet each of you a thousand dollars against your souls. One, ca one thousand cash against a mock of your souls. If I win, you all show up at the mission tonight. Is it okay? So let me get this. If you lose, we each get a thousand dollars. And if you win, we gotta show up to that mission doll's cabaret. If I win, you show up at the Save a Soul mission. One meeting. Okay, by me. By me too. You too, Nathan. A thousand bucks against your soul. I don't even think I got one. <laughs> you got one someplace, buddy. How do you spell soul? S O. All right, all right. Put down your markers. Put them down. Come on, roll over. Hey, give me the dice. And give me room. What's the matter, Sky? Turning chicken? You've seen me roll for a hundred G's, but I got a little more than dough riding on this one. They call you Lady Luck, but there is room for doubt. At times you have a very young lady-like way of running out. You're on this date with me. The pickings have been lush. And yet before this evening is over, you might give me the brush. You might forget your manners. You might refuse to stay. And so the best that I can do is pray. Gentlemen, see how resident you can be. I know the way you treated other guys you've been with. Luck to be a lady with me. A lady wouldn't be her escort. It isn't fair, it isn't nice. A lady doesn't wander all over the room and blow on some other guy's dice. Are you for lies? Never get out of my sight. Stick with me, baby. I'm the better you can get in. Love 
Nathan will be late. Come on. No, I can't. Nathan, why can't we elope right now? Because, well, I gotta go to a prayer meeting. Nathan, this is the biggest lie you've ever told me. But I promise you it's true. You promised me this. You promised me that. You promised me anything under the sun. Then you give me a kiss and you're grabbing your hat and you're off to the races again when I think of the and I think of the way I try. I could honestly die. Call a lawyer and sue me, sue me. What can 
Sinners. Sorry we uh, didn't have time to clean him up. <laughs> Won't you gentlemen sit down? Yeah. Hey, sit down, all of you. <sighs> gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to the Save a Soul mission. Uh. Hey, hey, this is a meeting, not Roseland. So I suggest that you do not indulge in any unpleasantness. Since I am departing for Points West tonight, I am appointing Nathan Detroit Major Domo in my place. Nathan, if anybody does not conduct himself according to Hoyle, they will answer to Sky Masterson personally. And that means in person. Hmm, Lord Remarkable Young Man. So remember that, you guys. Brother Abernathy. Your dice. Gentlemen, we are honored tonight. The meeting will be conducted by the head of our organization, General Cartwright. It is wonderful to see our mission graced by the presence of so many evil looking sinners. <laughs> <laughs> now, who would like to testify? Who would like to start the ball rolling by giving testimony? Benny, 
Give testimony. I ain't no stool pigeon. Come, brothers, I know it is difficult, but let one of you give testimony to the sin that is in his heart. Come on, Benny, tell him what a bun you are. Benny! Uh, I was always a bad guy and a gambler, but I ain't gonna do it no more. I thank you. There, don't you feel better now? I'm all right. Anyone else? Big you. Well, I was bad when I was a kid, but I've gone straight, as I can prove by my record. 33 arrests and no convictions. Anyone else? Harry! No. Harry the horse! <laughs> well, this guy was going up for assault and... I beg your pardon? Yeah, Sky Masterson. Rules a thousand dollars against their souls. That's why we're here. I don't think I understand. I do. He means that they're only here because Mr. Masterson won them in a dice game. How wonderful! This whole meeting the result of gambling. It shows just how good can come from evil. Sergeant Sarah, you've done remarkable work. Hasn't she, though? Thank you. Hey, I haven't finished my testimonies yet. My sin is that when Sky was born, I wish I would have won the $1,000 instead of having to come here. But now that I'm here, I still wish it. <laughs> Anyone else? We will now hear testimony from Brother Nicely, Nicely Johnson. Brother Nicely, Nicely. Get up, you fat water buffalo! <laughs> <laughs> well, it happened to me kind of funny. Like a dream. That's it, a dream. Tell us in your own words. I dreamed last night I got on a boat to heaven And by some chance I had brought my dice along And there I stood and I hollered, someone feed me. But the passengers, they know right from wrong. For the people all said, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. The people all said, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. And the devil will drag you under by the show of hell of your chicken coat. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. I sailed away on that little boat to heaven And by some chance found a bottle in my fist And there I stood, nicely passing out the whiskey But the passengers were found to resist For the people all said beware, people all said beware. The devil will drag you under, but the fish is never through. Forget the boat, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. And as I laughed at those passengers to heaven, a great big wave came and pushed me over the door. And as I sang, and I hollered, someone save me. That's the moment I woke up. Thank the Lord. And I sent myself to that. 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 Anything we can do for you, Brother Brannigan? Maybe you would care.
to testify. I'll do my testifying in court, where I'll testify that you ran a crap game in this very mission. Miss Sarah, you were there. You saw them. Aren't these the fellows? I've never seen them before in my life. There's a right broad. <laughs> <clears throat> now, if you would excuse me, officer, we would like to go on with our meeting. Never seen crapshooters spend so much time in a mission. Maybe that's what they mean by holy rollers. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Sarah. People, I have a confession to make. We did shoot crap here last night. And we're very sorry. Aren't we, boys? Yeah, yeah, very sorry. sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I also did something else. I made a bet with a certain guy that he could not take a certain doll on a trip with him. For this, I should not have done, although, did me no harm, as I won the bet. You won the bet? Sure. You told me you didn't take the doll. I feel a lot better now. Hallelujah! 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 Gentlemen, we will now sing Follow the Fold. I'm sure you all know it. <laughs>
was Nathan in Detroit there. I'm sure I heard that name. A darling little fellow with cute red hair? Yes, I think so. How do you like that rat? <laughs> Just when he's supposed to be lying to me, he's telling me the truth. <sighs> I'm glad I'm through with him. And you ought to be glad you're through with Sky too. I am. What are we crazy or something? At watermakers and sex inclines, a lesson I've been taught. You can't get alterations on a dress you haven't bought. At any vegetable market from Borneo to Nome, you mustn't squeeze a melon till you get the melon home. You simply gotta gamble, you get no guarantee. Now doesn't that kind of apply to you and I? Crazy and wild and free, marry the man today, rather than die in sorrow. Marry the man today and change his ways tomorrow. Marry the man today. Marry the man today. Maybe he's leaving Maybe town. Maybe he's leaving town. Don't let him get away. Don't let him get away. Hurry and try and counterattack him and marry the man today. Give him the girlish laughter. Give him your hand today and save the fist. Slowly introduce him to the better things. Respectable, conservative, and clean. Reader's Digest, Guy Lombardo, Roger's Feet, Golf Galoshes, all the team. But marry the man today, handle him meek and gently. Marry the man today and train him subsequently.
Brothers and sisters, life is one big crap game, and the devil is using loaded dice. What? Where's the crap game? <laughs> Brother Masterson? Yes, Brother Detroit. Can we get married in your mission? I'm late night. Why, certainly. I married Brother Masterson and Sister Sarah. How we do the same for you two? Congratulations, Nathan. I'll let you wait to find you'll be very happy. What Obadiah means is this. <laughs> Obadiah? <laughs> He wishes you every happiness, and so do I. Oh, thank you so much. Nathan and I are going to be so happy sitting next to each other every single night. <laughs> when you see a guy reach for